I don't know about you, but I don't really like going out and spending $50 on a new mouse all the time. So whether you're a gamer or an office worker and whether you don't want to spend the money or whether you just get comfortable with a mouse and you want to keep it, um, yeah, they go bad. Let's, let's be honest. Both of these uh, mice have buttons that have gone bad. Uh, the, usually it's the left mouse button. This one, the scroll wheel has gone bad. And they're ten dollar mouses, but um, you know I really, I really like them. You get used to it. It's what you want to use, right? So um, there are some few things we can do to turn an inexpensive mouse into a very reliable mouse, into a gamer mouse. Um, yeah, that is inexpensive and will make the mouse last five to ten times longer at a much lower cost. Let's take a look at that. So what's a better mouse? How are we going to turn this cheap mouse into a super mouse? Well, first of all, a better mouse is lower cost. It starts out with a mouse that's like $10 versus $50. It's going to have a longer lifespan. When we're done with this, we're going to make it 50 to 80 million click lifespan versus a 1 to 10 million click lifespan. It's going to be lightweight and it's going to have changeable weights. Uh, so that's important. Office work and even gaming, a lot of people prefer a lighter mouse because your hand just gets tired. This super mouse is not going to have a high DPI, so anything higher than 1600 is going to be used for artwork. It's not typically for gaming or for office work. This mouse happens to be changeable, happens to go from low to, to about 1600, but yeah, so that's this is a good example of one. Uh, it's not going to have a lot of buttons. It's going to have typically four buttons plus the mouse wheel, and it's probably not going to have programmable macros because those come with you know, high dollar mouses, mices, mouses. So what is needed for work and gaming? Well, uh, pro gamers prefer 400 to 800 DPI, maximum 1200. So this mouse fits the bill. For office work, you just need 400 to 800. Low is good and it's cheap. Uh, if you're going to be doing graphic design, something like that, then yeah, you're going to want a uh, high end mouse and this, this is probably not for you. So what do we need to do to make this ordinary mouse into super mouse? Well, we need high quality switches and an encoder and we need the basic mouse. That's an encoder. Um, and these are some high end switches and I've got videos on how to change these out. Uh, it, it is a soldering solution. So yeah. And I've also got a video on how to choose mouse buttons based on quality because surprisingly they come in a whole range of qualities. Okay, so it's time to take this apart and start uh, start doing what it takes to make it happen. Okay, let's get to it. One benefit of these cheaper mouses or mice is that typically you don't have to remove these slider pads. And this one only has one, count them, one screws. Let's see, there we go. And we'll see, how does this one separate? I'm guessing here, yes. Okay, and then let's just move that forward a little bit and off it pops. And the switches we are going after, uh, this one and this one, this one's still okay, this changes the mode and then we are going to change out this encoder and we'll do a close-up and I'll tell you a little bit more about these encoders. They are swapped out pretty much like a mouse switch. They have three connections, but when you go to buy one, the measurements are a little bit tricky. So we'll go over that. That first of all, you want a good quality one of these. This is a kale. It's a sealed unit. The old one did not last very long. I don't know the brand. I've never heard of this brand, but when you order one, the key measurement is from the board to the center of that hole and this one is 11 millimeters and that's what i ordered they oftentimes come in half millimeter increments so you got to measure carefully so you make sure that it will fit but yeah so that's it for for this encoder now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go off and i'm going to make these changes again i've got a video i'll put the uh the link to uh, that down in the description and yeah, I won't repeat that again, make you all watch it. So again, we're going to change these two and this encoder 
and then we will be back and we will also look at making the mouth lighter at that time. Here we are all finished up with our soldering. We've got an 80 million click switch here. Got a 65 million click switch here. These were left over from a project. That's why we have kind of odd ones. And then we've got our high end encoder right there. Uh, all ready to go. So let's put the cover back on and give it a test. I said we could make this lighter and they've got like a six millimeter chunk of steel in here that is bolted in. I'm going to remove this to make the mouse lighter. Now I could replace it with steel washers to adjust the amount of weight in here. But uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is kind of absurd for a mouse this small. Okay, so that is taken care of. We have made the mouse much lighter. Now, let's put her back together. This one just hooks in the front here. Slide backward. One screw. Come on, fingers. Don't fail me. And let's go give her a test. Here's our mouse, all ready to go. I got it on my son's uh, computer so he can look at gaming. But uh, yeah, I should probably stick to office work as I'm not very good at this. Um, but that's the left mouse button, working well. That's the right mouse button, that's aiming. And that's mouse forward, mouse backward. Oh yeah, feels very good. So, okay, well that's it for turning a inexpensive mouse into a super office or super gaming mouse.